Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Mountains are full of surprises. You just never know what you're going to find up there. Today, I'll be exploring a secret nuclear base, lost relics of Rome, and a pyramid in Scotland. Mysterious ancient site. Thanks to drone technology, archaeologists don't need to scale mountain sides anymore to find ancient sites. A group of scientists recently used small, airborne drones to identify an ancient Roman settlement in the Apennines Mountains of Italy. For years, the settlement had eluded archaeologists, mainly because it's too difficult to reach on foot. But that's not the only reason this place has remained hidden. It's also too dangerous to find the ancient site using an airplane. Scientists sent their drones into the Tapino Valley, which cuts through the rugged terrain of southern Italy. According to study author Tessa Steck from Leiden University, there was an isolated mountain society that lived here in the ancient world. Thousands of years ago, the region was known as Samnium. Because of their isolation, archaeologists have had a difficult time understanding what their society was like. Past discoveries in the area include a pair of ancient temples, but both of them were found by accident during construction. There have never been any half-decent discoveries of farms, villas, burial grounds, or villages. But open drones might reveal some secrets, with archaeologists sending a fleet of them into the narrow passages of the valley. Amazingly, they immediately started identifying ruins. Ruins that they believe date from as early as the 5th century BC, near the very beginning of the Roman Republic. Steck believes that the drones have found evidence of a whole society of people who lived deep in the mountains. Unfortunately, though, nothing remains of them now except the ruins of their temples and villages. I want to give a huge thank you to Aaron Paulus and Fugs. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. We wouldn't be here without you. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the family. Lost Roman Coins Sometimes you just get lucky. Sometimes you hike up a mountain and come across ancient artifacts worth a small fortune. It doesn't happen often, and definitely not when you expect. But every now and then in the Swiss Alps, a hiker stumbles upon a gold mine. And just recently, a hiker in the Alps discovered a Roman coin. The hiker was thrilled, as you can imagine. But the hiker wasn't an archaeologist, and they weren't greedy either. They took the mysterious Roman coin without poking around and left. Then they showed the coin to their local archaeological unit and gave them the location of where they'd uncovered it. It took two years, but in 2022, the archaeologists got to work digging. And soon enough, they'd uncovered what's believed to be an entire lost place of holy worship. The team of researchers from Bern in Switzerland found a whole trove of treasures from the Roman era. The treasure was left as an offering to the gods of the mountain. So far, the team has uncovered a lot, including 59 Roman shoe nails, 27 rock crystals, and 100 coins. Regula Gubler, the scientific manager involved in the project, said the site is highly unusual. It's fairly common to find a single Roman coin in the Alps, lost by an ancient traveler. But this site is truly incredible. It isn't near any known human habitation, either modern or from Roman times. It's also located 8,500 feet above sea level. This wasn't a mountain pass used by travelers who lost their treasure. It was an extremely specific site that people must have gone to on purpose, like a pilgrimage. If you were a Roman 2,000 years ago, you likely weren't doing a lot of hiking. Instead, you would have been busy surviving and trying not to get leprosy. To scale this mountain and deposit coins would have been a huge ordeal. So, whichever god was worshipped here must have played a big role in Roman society. Jingmai Mountain An epic mountain like no other has just become the newest World Heritage Site in China. In September 2023, Jingmai Mountain in China's Yunnan province was officially inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Not the mountain itself, but the cultural landscape on the mountain known as the Old Tea Forests. The high-altitude landscape is a breathtaking place that makes you feel as if you've been transported back to the ancient Far East. You're likely wondering what a tea forest is. The new heritage site consists of five ancient tea forests that spread across a whopping 1,180 acres of mountainside. Tea forests are like apple orchards, but for tea. And 1,000 years ago, the ancient ancestors of the Blang indigenous group migrated onto the mountain. Then they began to domesticate wild tea trees. 
the mountain soon became a major producer of tea, with nine villages spread across the forest to safeguard their cultivations. The truly spectacular part of all this is that not much has changed in the past 1,000 years. This landscape is considered one of the best examples on the planet of humans living harmoniously with nature. For 1,000 years, locals have continued to cultivate the natural forests without destroying their environment. Though I should mention that the villagers do have things like toilets and running water now, so it's not exactly the Stone Age here. The villages have not grown very much though since 1000 AD, with about 5,000 people spread across the mountain. They live peaceful and traditional lives without the need for fertilizers or pesticides. It really is like a Garden of Eden or a little slice of natural paradise. The Highest Train Station There is a train station in the Swiss Alps that's situated 11,332 feet above sea level. It's the highest train station in Europe, and it doesn't look like it should even exist. It looks more like a villain's secret base from a Bond movie. The incredible piece of modern engineering sits precariously on the top of a rocky outcrop. It appears as if it could tumble off the side of the mountain at any moment, yet it's been clinging to the stone for over a century. This amazing train station is called Jungfraujok. Work began on the station at the end of the 19th century. The Swiss wanted to build a railway that would travel all the way up the Bernese Alps and reach the ceiling of Europe. What makes it even more impressive is that the first man to climb to the saddle of this place did so in 1862. Climbers reached the peak of the rocky outcrop on foot, and just a couple of decades later, they started building a railway. And that speaks volumes about how quickly humanity was progressing at the end of the 19th century. It took a long time to build this place. Throughout a total of 16 years, hundreds of workers drilled through the mountains, blowing tunnels wide open with dynamite. An estimated 30 people died during the construction, which is honestly less than you'd think for such a dangerous project. In 1912, the railway was officially inaugurated, and it's been operational ever since. Instead of climbing the Alps, you can now ride a train for 30 minutes through the heart of a snowy mountain to gaze out at the world from its highest balcony. Who wants to try it, or have you already? Let me know in the comments below! Mount Yamantau Mount Yamantau in Russia can be found deep in the vast expanse of the Ural Mountains. Its name is nearly as old as time, meaning bad mountain in the indigenous Bashkir language. They basically hit the nail right on the head because this is seriously one bad mountain. Rumor has it that the Russians started hollowing out the mountain in the 1990s to use it as a secret nuclear facility. It's never been officially confirmed, but Mount Yamantau is almost certainly holding a nuclear arsenal. There are no main roads near Mount Yamantau. The only local town is that of Mezgorye at the foot of the mountain, which happens to be a closed town. That means no information gets out. It's believed that Mezgorye houses at least 30,000 workers, likely even more. After the fall of the Soviet Union, United States spy satellites picked up a large excavation project on the mountain. There was something seriously big going on, though the Russian government said that it was nothing but a mining site. To this day, nobody knows what's going on at Mount Yamantau. There's been speculation that it's the Russian equivalent of Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado, and some have even said it's the Russian version of America's Area 51. All I know is that it's the last place you want to go for a hike because you might never be seen again. Iran's Secret Drone Base In Iran's Zagros Mountains, not far from the city of Shiraz, the Israeli research center called Alma discovered a secret underground drone base. According to Alma, which is a non-governmental think tank focusing on security and geopolitics, the base is about five miles or so from a military airport. It's complete with five silos that can be used for launching deadly drones to attack anywhere in the Middle East. But get this, these aren't the kinds of drones you can buy at your local tech store. Alma's experts claim that the base could be a launch site for drone swarms. If you've seen the newest Spider-Man movie, that will give you an idea of advanced swarm drone technology. But military experts have raised the alarm in recent years about drone swarms. Hundreds, even thousands of drones, like a swarm of locusts, can make automatic decisions and share information. They could be controlled from a central location while also operating through artificial intelligence. Drone swarms could be the future of warfare. 
Imagine if instead of soldiers descending on a city with machine guns, an army of drones came down from the sky like mechanical goblins. This is what may have just been found in the Iranian mountains, a secret facility that could unleash a buzzing storm of death drones. The Lost Greek City In Greece, at the top of a mountain, archaeologists have made an unprecedented discovery. They claim to have found a lost city that could change how they understand the ancient world. The archaeologists involved in the discovery hail from all over the globe. The international group came across the ruins of a metropolis from 2,500 years ago. Almost nothing is left of it today, with the city's few remnants buried underneath the peak of Strongilovuni Hill. The hill itself rises like Mount Olympus from the Thessalian Plains. At the moment, researchers have no name for the city, but it definitely wasn't an obscure mountain settlement populated by hermits and sheep herders. The sheer scope of the ruins points to it having once been a major city. PhD student Robin Ronland from the University of Gothenburg said that the most striking find was the fortifications. There are still some walls that are standing eight feet tall, suggesting that the mountaintop city was originally guarded by massive stone barricades. On the lower slopes of the hill are indications of urban neighborhoods. It's likely that the peak of the mountain was the crown of the city, where the ruler and the elite would have lived. Then, moving down from the mountain, there would have been urban settlements, neighborhoods, and industrial areas. It's amazing that nobody has ever explored this place before. Archaeologists still have a lot of work to do if they're going to uncover the secrets of the city. Up until this point, the area was considered a frontier of the ancient world. Nobody thought anything important had happened here, but they were wrong. The biggest question now is, what happened? And why did the mountain metropolis crumble to dust? The Impact Crater For the first time ever, scientists have confirmed an impact crater on a mountaintop. Deep in northeastern China, there is evidence of an intergalactic object that smashed into the very top of a mountain. It doesn't look like an impact crater at first glance. It looks more like a mountain that has two peaks and a valley in the middle. But that valley in the middle, which is about a mile wide, is in fact an impact crater. A very long time ago, the researchers don't know exactly when, something smashed into this mountain. And it hit the mountain so hard that it split its top into two peaks. What's really interesting, and actually a little funny, is that the mountain peaks are littered with tiny rock fragments, which the locals call celestial stones. But they never had any idea how accurate the name is. When researchers looked at these celestial stones, they were able to easily identify them as being made by the impact. The stones were created by massive heat and pressure, something that only happens during a meteor strike or maybe during an atomic blast. There isn't much else to be known about the impact crater. The granite that forms the mountains is from 150 million years ago, so the impact happened sometime between then and now. Another intriguing thing to know is that nearby is what could be one of the biggest impact craters on the planet. Scientists have found glassy rocks made by the impact as far away as Australia. They believe that the crater is located somewhere in northwestern China, though scientists have never been able to find it. A pyramid in Scotland? In August 2023, a video appeared online showing a pyramid at the top of a mountain in Scotland. It came as a shock because Scotland is the last place you'd expect to find a pyramid. Mysterious stone circles are easy to find, and so too are advanced stone burials from 5,000 years ago. But pyramids are by far some of the rarest things you can uncover on the planet. It's true, though. There is a pyramid on a Scottish mountain. The only bummer is that the pyramid isn't exactly ancient. It comes from the 19th century, built by none other than Queen Victoria herself in honor of her late husband, Prince Albert. This little-known relic stands at the top of the mountain within the council area of Aberdeenshire. It isn't the only one, either. There are 11 stone pyramids surrounding the majestic Balmoral Castle. And today, the castle still serves as a summer home for the royal family something that's been happening for over a century. But what did I mean when I said Queen Victoria built the pyramid? She didn't stack the bricks up one by one herself, of course not. When Prince Albert died in 1861, Victoria commissioned the pyramid to be built in his honor as a memorial cairn. She even wrote about it in her journal. 
saying that she had the structure built big enough for it to be seen all the way down the valley. Thanks for watching! Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed! Cave Temple On Shodoshima Island in Japan, there is a series of mysterious cave temples high up in the mountains. These temples were originally occupied by monks, and to access them, some monks and pilgrims climbed up the sheer rock faces using chains just to reach them. Inside the safety of the caves, the monks meditated in privacy, far away from the prying eyes of society. Nowadays, accessing the temples for either pilgrimage or tourism is much easier, since there are real roads and stairs. But centuries ago, it was incredibly difficult to get here. The first main group of temples are on the southeast part of the island, gathered on a group of peaks about 1,500 feet high. These temples are hardly noticeable from the ground, tucked into the niches in the rock. One of the temples, simply called Temple One, was dedicated to Kobo Daishi, the famous founder of Shingon Buddhism. Legend has it that a mysterious spring inside the cave was created by Kobo himself when he struck the ground with his staff and released a clean flow of water from within. The most mind-boggling sight is the Konpira Shrine, standing at the top of the mountain, where it looks impossible for any human to have ever built anything. It is honestly incredible how anyone could have climbed up the cliff face with construction materials. Nevertheless, the shrine still stands today in a rock crevice. Mysterious and fascinating. Mesopotamia's First Empire Archaeologists in Iraq recently discovered an ancient lost city below the modern Iraqi city of Kurdistan. The ruins were found at the edge of the Zagros Mountains and were part of Mesopotamia's first empire some 4,000 years ago. The hidden settlement was found by a French mission which had been active in the area since 2012. Ever since Iraq opened up to scientists, archaeologists have been busy trying to hunt down lost archaeological sites like this one. Initial excavations suggest the place was a thriving city populated by mountain people at the western edge of Mesopotamia's border. Researchers discovered the foundations of buildings, ancient tablets, artifacts, and evidence of livestock farming and irrigation. The tablets have proven to be interesting because they appear to be records of trading between merchants, with items such as flour listed in ancient writing. Based on the location of the settlement, it was probably part of the Akkadian Empire. This was the first true empire that ruled the Mesopotamian region, stretching from the edge of Turkey to the Persian Gulf. While little is known about the place, it was sizable, with a few thousand residents. Archaeologists will need to do more excavations throughout the area to see just what kind of role the settlement played in the Akkadian Empire. The Nanigat Hills The Nanigat Hills rise nearly 3,000 feet above sea level in India and are part of an ancient mountain pass filled with water cisterns, mysterious caves, and ancient ruins that have long since been destroyed. The very peak of the Nanagat Hills is at the top of a cliff overlooking a vast landscape of green forests and rolling pastures. These days, it's a popular place for hikers and rock climbers, but the history of the hills goes back much further. Ancient traders moving through India were forced to cross over the Nanagat Hills. Because so many caravans moved along the route, it's no surprise that buildings cropped up here and there. Merchants would spend the night in caves or at outposts set up in the misty plateaus. In fact, the name Nanagat roughly translated means coin pass, as the area acted as a sort of toll booth between trading regions. But one of the most mysterious caves goes back even further, to around the 1st century BC, during the Satavahana dynasty. There are inscriptions in this cave believed to be roughly 2,000 years old. These inscriptions have fascinated historians for one main reason. According to specialist George Buhler, the inscriptions are some of the oldest historical writings in Western India. The inscriptions speak of Vedic deities and Hindu deities linking the two religions. This is important because it proves that even with the rise of Hinduism, the older Vedic ideas were still practiced into the 1st century BC. The Rock of Guatapé The Rock of Guatapé is an incredible place in Colombia. Though it isn't exactly a mountain, it is remarkably similar to one. It's actually an enormous rock that weighs about 10 million tons and was once worshipped by the Tahamius Indians as a god, centuries before the Spaniards ever showed up. The Rock of Guatapé is the tallest thing for miles around, visible from nearly everywhere from the surrounding towns of Guatapé, Colombia, about two hours outside of Medellín. 
At the highest point of the rock, it has an elevation of 7,005 feet above sea level. A staircase built into the stone made up of 659 steps leads to the top. The view from the top of the staircase is astounding, offering panoramic views of the surrounding countryside. Residents turned the rock into a tourist attraction. There is some other rather unusual history associated with the rock. The letters G and I appear painted on the side, but it was actually the beginning of the name of the town Guatape that was being painted. However, a mob from a neighboring town that also claimed the rock, El Peñol, interrupted the process, so only the single stroke of the U was completed. The two towns have had a long-standing dispute over the location. In one of the most remote parts of India's Himalaya mountains, a missing plane from World War II was just recently discovered. The plane crashed into the mountains roughly 80 years ago in 1945. Tragically, there were no survivors. A search followed the initial crash but was called off because it was lost too high up in the mountains. None of the bodies of the 13 people on board the C-46 transport were ever found. It was a U.S. adventurer named Clayton Coolis who led the mission after being approached by the son of one of the people who died on board. The expedition took several months, especially since Clayton didn't know exactly where to look. He and his team of guides had to wade through rivers up to their chest and camp in freezing caverns at extraordinarily high altitudes in their search. Three of the guides unfortunately died from hypothermia when they got caught in a snowstorm. But through all the hardship, the team finally came across the plane near the mountaintop. They identified the wreckage by the tail number, though the aircraft was in pretty harsh shape. Pieces of it were scattered across the rocks and snow, and even though it's been identified, the adventurer didn't find any bodies. They are likely still there, hidden under the frozen terrain. Do you think it was worth all the death and misery to give closure to the families of the original crash? Or was it simply more tragedy added to the original, pre-Hispanic ruins? On a mountaintop in Mexico, experts recently investigated stone monuments estimated to be over 1,500 years old. It wasn't actually the experts that found the monuments, but a group of villagers who recognized the two stone artifacts as being ancient and called the professionals in to investigate. Archaeologists now believe the mountaintop site was once a major place of importance. They believe there were seven pyramids here, a massive ceremonial center, and a full games court. It was inhabited by the Zapotecs, the people who dominated central Mexico in the area of what is today Oaxaca. If you've ever heard of the great ruins of Monte Alban, they were left behind by the Zapotecs. Direct descendants of the Zapotecs still live today in the thousands and throughout the region. Some descendants have preserved and can still speak their ancient language. Sadly, the pyramids and games court and any other structures that may have stood at the mountaintop are long gone. The only things still standing are faded stones and the carvings left on them. By comparing the carvings to others from the Zapotecs, researchers believe they were meant to represent the god of the underworld. It's unclear what all this means right now. The stones were uncovered at the top of Cerro de Peña Mountain, at a height of 6,000 feet. The site would have been hidden in the 6th century and only accessible via a rocky path nearly three hours straight up. It was likely of great ritual importance and definitely had something to do with the lord of the underworld. Giant Prehistoric Crocodiles New evidence has revealed that in the Canadian province of British Columbia, located just north of the U.S. state of Washington, there were once giant crocodiles. Fossils of terrifying creatures have been discovered in the mountainous Peace region of BC, near Tumblr Ridge. These weren't simply crocodiles, they were mega prehistoric crocodiles. The fossils aren't of actual bones, but tracks left behind by the crocodiles around 95 million years ago. Researchers also found the tracks of ankylosaurs and turtles, but it's the crocodiles that really stood out. Based on the distance between each claw impression, researchers say the body was roughly 36 feet long. That makes it about twice the size of any living crocodile today. It would have been a major apex predator and not something you'd want to tangle with. The Super Mountains Scientists have made a bizarre discovery of something they're calling Super Mountains. This discovery isn't something found in the mountains, but a set of actual ancient mountains that are long gone. Researchers published their findings in a scientific journal, detailing a previously unknown mountain range that they've named the Nuna Super Mountains. The mountain range existed 1.8 billion years ago. These great mountains existed on an extremely old continent called Nuna, 
which combined modern pieces of land from Africa, Eurasia, South America, and Australasia. While the mountains may not have actually been taller than the Himalayas, they were certainly longer. While the height remains uncertain in terms of sheer scale, they made the Himalayas look like a pile of sand on the beach. They were about three times longer than the entire Himalayan mountain range, stretching roughly 4,500 miles. Here's another interesting piece of information. The research team discovered that the mountains existed at the same time as a major evolutionary change on the planet. It was right around the time that life began figuring itself out in a very small way. Scientists from the Australian National University believe it was the crumbling destruction of this mountain range that actually helped develop early planetary life. As the mountain built up and then broke apart, the erosion and sedimentation leaked substances like phosphorus into the ancient oceans. It was a lot of moving pieces, and it likely all worked out to spur on the creation of the first single-celled organisms. A very scary plant. An entirely new type of carnivorous plant has been discovered living high up in the mountain bogs. The flower, called false asphodel, lives in the wetlands of western North America at high altitudes. It can be found all the way from the mountains in California to the mountains of Alaska. And although the plant itself has been known to scientists for at least 100 years, no one ever knew it was actually a carnivorous plant. It wasn't until botanist Qian Shi Lin began investigating the mysterious mountain flower that she realized it was a meat eater. By closely studying the false asphodel, she discovered that it gets most of its nutrition from eating insects. It has very sticky traps, which it uses to catch bugs that land on it. Then it slurps up their vital nutrients, getting about two-thirds of its necessary nitrogen from living victims. Noah's Ark It looks like Noah's Ark has been discovered in Turkey. At least, that's according to biblical archaeologists who recently used ground-penetrating radar to look at Mount Tenduric. According to some, it's this very mountain which was described in the Bible as the location where Noah landed his ark after the great flood described in the Bible's book of Genesis. While the belief that this rocky formation is actual evidence of the biblical ark is unconfirmed, this shape does look remarkably similar to that of a boat. The team consists of researchers from both the U.S. and Turkey, led by ark hunter Andrew Jones. Andrew says preliminary scans reveal some kind of massive object, almost definitely artificial. Unfortunately for Jones and his team, geologists aren't buying the story. They say that what the ark hunters are looking at is nothing but an ordinary rock formation. Bridge of the Inca The Bridge of the Inca is a fascinating monument in a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It can be found high up in the Andes Mountains in Argentina, somewhere around 7,000 feet above sea level. The place is fascinating for two main reasons. First of all, it's a natural bridge and one of the most striking geological places in all of South America. Secondly, the Inca used the Puente del Inca as part of their vast road network. The whole region is riddled with ancient ruins, yet the bridge itself is 100% natural. The Inca didn't need to do anything in terms of construction. The bridge was already there. But of course, the Inca had some pretty cool legends surrounding the bridge. It's said that the heir to the throne of the empire was affected by a strange and mysterious paralysis. Healers recommended that the air go from Cusco to the slopes of the Inca Bridge to heal in the natural springs. But when they reached it, there was no bridge there. Inca warriors had to embrace each other and form a human bridge so that the paralyzed air could be brought across. The air was then dipped in the hot springs and magically healed. When he turned around, the Inca warriors had all petrified, creating the stone bridge that still stands today. A face in the mountain. A large and very mysterious face was recently found on the cliffside of an island in the Pacific Rim National Park Reserve. The face is exactly what it sounds like, a truly huge human face carved out of the rock on the side of a cliff in the absolute middle of nowhere. The face can be found on Reeks Island in British Columbia, Canada. This is not a place you can reach very easily and rarely sees human visitors. The person who found the face carved high up in the mountainous terrain of the island was Hank Gus, a member of the Teshat First Nation. Hank had heard about the face from a kayaker who saw it by accident. It then took Hank two years of tireless searching to finally find it himself. Now that's dedication. Have you ever been that dedicated to finding anything? Tell me about your experience in the comments.
The face is about seven feet tall and looks strikingly like some other faces made by the ancient Teshat people. They have been living in this part of British Columbia for thousands of years, so it's no surprise that there are still some archaeological treasures lying around undiscovered. This is one of the largest areas of untouched nature still left in the world, where massive stone faces can still go unseen for years. Prehistoric Campers an interesting new study has given some insight into the patterns of mountain people in America 11,000 years ago. It was in the year 2006 that Dr. Richard Adams, an archaeologist from Laramie, Wyoming, discovered a prehistoric settlement 11,000 feet high in the mountains of Wyoming. It was an amazing discovery that turned the world of American archaeology upside down. Nobody had thought there would be an alpine village hidden so high in the mountains. It was assumed the native people lived in the flatlands and wouldn't have bothered going up so high. Archaeologists found pottery, bone tools, arrowheads, and other evidence that some primitive group had been there at least 2,000 years ago. Then the researchers started spreading out across the mountain ridges. They came across other sites, dozens of them, some over 11,000 years old. As it turned out, the mountain wilderness of Wyoming has been a popular destination for human settlers since around the time humans first arrived in America. People hunted in the mountain peaks, lived in basic huts, and didn't seem to mind the weather at all. But who exactly these people were, how extensive their settlements may have been, and where they went is still a total mystery. Lost City on the Mountain Archaeologists discovered a lost city on the top of a Greek mountain that dates back 2,500 years. The fact that nobody ever found it until recently is kind of hard to imagine. It was in 2016 that the international team of Swedish and Greek archaeologists came across the lost city buried underneath the earth, 190 miles from Athens and way above sea level. It was found literally in the clouds on the Strongilovuni Hill, which is on the Thessalian Plains. According to researcher Robin Runland, an expert in classical archaeology and ancient history, he and his team learned that nobody had ever explored this particular hill before. They didn't know what they were going to find, but knew it hadn't been looked at by archaeologists yet. So they climbed to its summit and found a city, covering an area of 99 acres. They discovered walls and towers and were even greeted by the city gates upon their arrival. Though, of course, none of this was visible from the ground below. The only way to see it was by actually climbing the mountain and reaching its peak, which nobody had done before. It was one of the last explored places in Greece and is still stumping scientists today. Researchers found pottery, coins, and other artifacts that have dated the city back to 500 BC. However, why it was abandoned, who founded the city in the first place, and what in the world it was doing on the top of a mountain are all questions that have still yet to be answered. Do you think there are any other unexplored places like this where an ancient city is sitting untouched waiting to be found? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got lots more videos like these coming soon. Ancient Cave Artifacts a discovery in a Mexican cave, located deep in a rural mountain range, may just be changing the timeline of human arrivals in America. For pretty much all the 20th century, archaeologists have agreed that human beings crossed the land bridge from Siberia and entered North America no later than 1,300 years ago. Now, a new study at Chiquihuite Cave by researchers with the Autonomous University of Zacatecas has pushed the date back to 26,500 years. The cave, 9,000 feet above sea level in the Astillero Mountains, has revealed stone artifacts, tools used for cutting, animal bones, pieces of charcoal, and sediment samples, all dated over 26,000 years old. The consensus here is that humans came from Siberia much earlier than ever imagined, but that they meandered up into the mountains and lived in caves instead of building settlements. They very well could have lived in caves for 10,000 years until finally moving down into the lowlands, building settlements, and slowly evolving with the rest of humanity in other parts of the world. Would you want to live in a cave? Let me know in the comments below. Choquequirao The Cradle of Gold, also known as Choquequirao, was built by the Great Inca Empire sometime in the 15th century. It covers a massive area of over 4,000 acres, and is a shocking 9,000 feet above sea level. Forget about Machu Picchu, this is the true lost mountain city of the Inca. 
It overlooks the Apurimac River, probably founded by Topayupanqui, the 10th Sapa Inca and 5th ruler of the Hanan dynasty. He was also the son of Pachacuti, who was responsible for founding Machu Picchu. As you can probably tell, nearly every great ruler seemed obsessed with commissioning their very own city. Machu Picchu was so great that Yopayupanqui couldn't help himself but try to imitate it. He went a few miles down the road, up another mountain, and then built his city there. But there are other cities in the area as well, each of them way up in the Andes. There is Saiwite, Chachabamba, Guamanmarca, and Choquesuyus, all of them strikingly similar to Machu Picchu in terms of architectural style and construction techniques. Each of these sites is centered around a pair of main plazas on the very highest crest of a mountain ridge. The cities all contain temples, dwellings for the highest status members of the communities, bathing systems, common houses, and cultivated agricultural areas. And the same can be said of Chocaquirao. But this city is a little special in the sense that it had a lot of religious structures. The site also aligns directly with the solstices in June and December, making it one of the most important places in the Inca Empire for ceremonial activities. It was also a very important place following the Spanish conquest in the 1500s. Even after the Inca Empire collapsed, a stronghold of neo-Inca survivors was established here in 1537. They survived until the death of the last Inca ruler, Tupac Amaru, 40 years later. Why do you think ancient rulers loved building cities so high in the mountains? Let me know your theories below. Biblical Scrolls High above the salty flats of the Dead Sea, way above the Judean desert and its rough brown hills, there are mountain caves filled with treasure. At least the caves used to be filled with treasure. Of course, this is the mountainous region in Israel, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were first discovered in the 1950s by Bedouin shepherds. After the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, people from all over descended on the area and dug through every cave they could find in hopes of discovering a fragment and making some cash. It was a catastrophe for archaeologists. But there was one cave that was extraordinarily difficult to reach, a place nicknamed the Cave of Horror. It's about 260 feet directly beneath the top of a cliff, flanked by steep gorges and only accessible by rappelling straight down on a sheer cliff wall. It wasn't exactly an easy place for scavengers to search for scroll fragments 70 years ago. And so it's no surprise that recently dozens of biblical scroll pieces were taken from the cave by professional archaeologists with the latest equipment. Amazingly, these were the first finds of their kind in over 60 years. Archaeologists found fragments written in Greek from the biblical books of Zechariah, Nahum, and the book of the Twelve Minor Prophets. Even more fascinating is that the team discovered a perfectly woven basket from 10,500 years ago, making it the oldest complete basket ever found. They also came across the mummified remains of a child 6,000 years old. Not only was the cave used by early Jews to hide fragments of religious work, but it also appears to have been occupied by cave people. How they managed to get to and from such a precarious spot is a huge mystery. How do you think they got there? Lost Viking Village On a remote pass in the Norwegian mountains, archaeologists came across a Viking settlement. Of course, nothing remains of the settlement today except marks in the ground where it had once stood. But there was one here, and it was huge. The settlement was found on a mountain trail that's been the source of many discoveries over the past few years. Because of Norway's melting glaciers, the mountain pass here has been revealing thousands of artifacts, things like household items, broken sleds, lost skis, pieces of clothing, and all kinds of other artifacts. A total of 21 structures have been discovered so far in this mountain pass, in an area completely covered by thick juniper bushes. You would never even imagine there had been buildings here because the whole place is overgrown with bushes. There's nothing left except impressions on the ground. It wasn't until archaeologists like Radar Marstein and Lars Pilo started digging beneath the dirt that they were able to find scraps of outer walls and evidence of low embankments. It took a lot of work, and excavations are still ongoing, but there was a huge city here high up in the mountains between 750 and 1150 AD. That's roughly the entire time the Viking Age lasted. What that means is that while the Vikings were pillaging and terrorizing, and while people in Norway were moving through the mountains from one place to another, this settlement acted as a waypoint. 
it was a fully functioning city that catered to travelers moving across the brutal landscape. Would you rather explore snow-covered mountaintops or mountains in a warm climate? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Sacrifices to the god Zeus On the top of a Greek mountain, archaeologists found something gruesome and altogether terrifying. They found the skeleton of a teenager, along with scraps of other bones and ashes. Why were there so many bones and ashes on top of the mountain? It's because they had likely been sacrificed to the god Zeus. The teenager was found without a head, laid down on a pile of ash 3,000 years ago at the peak of Lycaon Mountain. It's fascinating because never before have archaeologists found proof that a human sacrifice did take place at an altar to Zeus. Yet here, where a small temple and altar were constructed in dedication to the Lord of Olympus, somebody had been ritualistically murdered. Even though there were all kinds of ritual sacrifices going on in places like Carthage, the Inca Empire, the Aztecs, and many other places, it wasn't a thing for the Greeks. Yet there was one cult so nefarious that even Plato wrote about the horrifying human sacrifices they made in the name of Zeus. Archaeologists always thought these writings were just myths, like what Plato wrote of Atlantis. But now they've discovered an actual sacrificial victim on a mountaintop, it looks like there may have been a real cult that killed people. The White Mountain Petroglyphs Wyoming's White Mountain formed sometime over 30 million years ago. It can be found north of Rock Springs in the Red Desert and boasts some of the most fascinating petroglyphs ever found at this altitude. High up in the mountain, carved into its white rock, you can discover ancient drawings of animals like bison and elk that were at least 1,000 years old. There are also small footprints, handprints, and geometric forms of great mystery scratched into the mountain, and even one picture of a warrior shown brandishing a sword. This is pretty bizarre, because the Native American people who drew these petroglyphs, members of tribes like the Shoshone and the Arapaho, didn't use medieval swords. So what was it? Ancient Villages in the Wyoming Mountains Archaeologists in Wyoming have found a series of ancient villages that were deserted thousands of years ago by the original inhabitants of the region. Matthew Stern from the University of Sheffield, along with his colleagues, found the 13 ancient villages. By combing through the wreckage of these long-lost settlements, Matthew and his team have been able to learn more about the lives of the ancestors of modern Native American tribes, like the Northern Paiute, the Comanche, and the Shoshone. The villages were uncovered in the Wind River Range, built high up in the mountains over 2,000 years ago. What makes this discovery so fascinating is that scientists have generally associated high altitudes with prehistoric travel, but not living. Scientists said it made no sense for ancient people to be living high up in the mountains. Well, tell that to the Inca and Machu Picchu. But 13 villages make a pretty substantial statement, meaning all of these presumptions are completely invalid. See, told ya. The settlements were found at over 9,000 feet, so people definitely lived and even thrived at high altitudes. Researchers believe the main staple of food for these mountain villagers have been the pine nuts from white bark pine trees. They even found grindstones that were once used to mash up pine nuts for consumption. But this just goes to show that there is so much we don't know about the original inhabitants of America. Ancient Viruses Scientists studying glacier ice high up in the Tibetan mountains have stumbled upon viruses frozen in the ice for 15,000 years. These viruses survived because they remained frozen. They presumably could have continued to live for thousands of years more if they had been left in the ice. They were discovered because scientists took a pair of ice samples from high up in the mountains, about 22,000 feet above sea level. The ice on the glaciers formed gradually for a very long time, according to researchers from Ohio State University. As the ice was forming, it trapped dust, gas from the atmosphere, bacteria, and viruses. To make sense of this, think of the glacier ice as one big sticky rat trap. Year after year, whatever was floating in the atmosphere at the time that the ice was frozen was trapped. The next year, when more ice froze, whatever was in the atmosphere then was also trapped. All the scientists needed to do was drill down into the ice to get a timeline of all the different things that were captured from the atmosphere over the past 15,000 years. What they discovered were 33 viruses. Four of them have already been identified by modern scientists, but 28 of them are new, and about half of those only survived because of the frozen conditions. 
What this means is that they probably can't live outside of an environment that isn't terribly cold. And while the viruses haven't proved contagious or fatal for humans yet, who knows what else could be lurking in the Tibetan mountains, trapped within layers of ice and snow. The Nanagat Cave Temple The Nanagat Cave Temple is one of the most mysterious places in all of India. The temple itself is located in Nanagat, a mountain pass in the Western Ghats mountain range. The pass is about 75 miles north from the largest major city. In ancient times, it was part of a trading route traversed by merchants and their caravans. But the mountain pass is most famous for its cave temple, which has inscriptions in an ancient Indo-Aryan dialect that go back to the 2nd century BC. The inscriptions mostly speak of Hinduism and its many deities, but also refer to ancient rituals and the Satavahana's dynasty that once controlled the area. The Nanagat Cave was probably a rest stop used by travelers moving through the mountains. Its name literally translates to Coin Pass. This has led researchers to believe that someone had lived in the cave full time and collected a toll from any trader who wished to cross to the other side. In fact, what some archaeologists have mistook for a stupa is actually nothing but a roadside toll booth. The mysterious cave was first discovered in modern times in 1828 by a man named William Sykes who was hiking in the area. While not an archaeologist or a historian, this outdoor enthusiast on a hike made what turned out to be a fascinating discovery. Mountains on the Moon The famous astronomer Galileo Galilei made a rather impressive discovery regarding mountains. But this discovery was not actually on our planet. We need to look a bit further, all the way to the moon. Why? In 1609, Galileo became the first person to discover mountains on the surface of the moon. Back in 1609, people still believed that our planet was simply a realm where mortals lived. They thought that space was a heavenly place where all celestial bodies were completely perfect and smooth spheres. What I mean by that is that things like the sun, the moon, and every star in the sky was supposed to be a perfectly smooth and bright marble. When Galileo discovered that there are mountains on the moon, it created quite the upheaval. People were absolutely furious. They blamed Earth and the corruption of humans for the contamination of the moon. Up until Galileo's discovery, a lot of scientists explained the fact that there were dark patches on the moon by saying it was just different densities of different materials. There couldn't possibly be mountains because it was perfectly circular and smooth like a polished stone. But Galileo saw through his telescope small shadows that moved depending on the position of the sun. These shadows moved along the surface of the moon just like shadows move on the surface of the earth when the sun rises and sets over mountains. To Galileo, this led to a very obvious conclusion. Unfortunately, the church was not a big fan of this discovery. Later on, when Galileo tried to explain that the earth revolves around the sun, he was sentenced to a lifetime of house arrest for blasphemy. Mysterious Human Remains On a California mountain peak, the discovery of a skeleton created quite a mystery. It all began when a pair of climbers were reaching the top of Mount Williamson, the second highest peak in the state of California. They happened upon what looked to be a skeleton buried underneath some stones in a field of boulders. When they got close enough to inspect the skeleton, it was pretty obvious that it belonged to a person and that they had been dead for a very long time. Nothing remained of this individual except a pair of leather shoes, a worn-out belt, and of course, his pale white bones. According to the Inyo County Sheriff's Department, nobody has any idea who this person was, how they died, or really any facts of the case. The spokeswoman for the department, Karma Roper, said it's a huge mystery. Here are all the facts we have anyway. The body was discovered at an altitude of roughly 14,000 feet. The average person would not hike to such an extreme height. Plus, the hikers who found the body had accidentally strayed off course and gotten a bit lost. The body could have been there for years, or even decades. Yet there have been no missing people from the area that the skeleton could belong to. There's just nowhere to even start with the search. What do you think happened to lead to the dead man in the mountains? Let me know your theories in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got lots more videos like these coming up. Mountains in the Earth I've already told you about mountains on the moon and now it's time to talk about subterranean mountains underneath the surface of the Earth. According to National Geographic, 
You could be standing at the very top of an enormous mountain, even taller than Mount Everest right now, and not even know it. This might sound like something out of a fantasy book, but it's completely true. There is a geological boundary that scientists found about 400 miles beneath the surface. The boundary has enormous mountains that would give you vertigo just trying to see their tops. How could we have possibly made such an amazing discovery? Scientists identified these subsurface mountains by using seismic waves from earthquakes. They tracked the signals kind of like extremely advanced subterranean ecolocation to get a rough idea of the underground mountains. There isn't a hollow earth fantasy landscape 400 miles deep, but rather hard, rugged rock. The mountains were probably created by the rearrangement of elements and chemicals. The point is that something very strange is happening deep beneath our feet. If you broke the earth open like a coconut, you would find enormous mountains hiding near the center. Ancient Mexican Mountain Cave At first glance, the Chiquihuite Cave in Mexico doesn't seem like a very nice place to live. It's a dark, creepy, unforgiving cave high in the desert mountains of central Mexico. It's also been excavated continuously for about the last decade. The reason is that the mysterious cave holds evidence of human occupation in North America going back 30,000 years. For any of you who remember your history class, you'll probably remember that scientists used to believe that humans first arrived on the continent only 15,000 years ago, give or take a few years. This one mountain cave where primitive humans once rested their heads has evidence that will make every school need to rewrite their history books. Archaeologist Cyprian Ardelean and his fellow researchers have already unearthed thousands of artifacts from the floor of the mountain cave. They found ancient blades, points from projectiles, and flakes of rock that had been used for making primitive tools. All the evidence points to human habitation. They even found bits of charcoal in the layers of sediment, meaning humans had been starting fires in the cave. It's possible that cave people lived here for around 15,000 or 17,000 years before they went out into the light and eventually formed great civilizations like the Maya and the Aztecs. If you really think about it, that's pretty amazing. People literally started off in Mexican mountain caves, gradually went up to the surface, and over a shockingly short amount of time, developed a complex society. Aliens in the mountains. A retired official who goes by the alias Anjali says that she had a meeting in 2018 with extraterrestrials in the Mojave Desert in Nevada. This woman claims to be a retired defense intelligence officer who was put in charge of forming a team of scientists. This team of scientists was charged with holding meetings with aliens. All of this may sound completely crazy, and maybe it is. Either way, she actually held a news conference at the Lincoln Memorial in August of 2021 to discuss her part, given to her by the United States government in parlaying with extraterrestrials. One of her other shocking claims is that deep in the Mojave Desert is an alien base inside a hollowed mountain. Her real name is Angelica Lynn Johnston, and she said in her news conference that she will be bringing an astronaut and some scientists to the secret base so that they can meet with the supposed aliens. But she never did give a date for when this is going to take place, and she couldn't actually give a specific location for the secret base. Either there are aliens living in the mountains of the Mojave, or this woman is a complete lunatic. We just don't know. The 1976 Bigfoot in 1976, a man in Oregon was intent on proving that Bigfoot really does exist. His name is Peter Byrne, currently 95 years old, and still searching for Bigfoot. He's been searching for almost a century, despite the fact that everyone seems to think he's completely crazy, and that Bigfoot is nothing but a figment of people's imaginations. But to be honest, nobody has gone after Bigfoot harder than Peter. He went on an expedition in Nepal in the 1950s to try and discover the Yeti living in the Himalayan mountains. He found a few footprints up there in the snow at altitudes of 15,000 feet, but these were never authenticated as belonging to a great mountain ape. In the 1960s, Peter moved to Oregon and directed the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition. He continued trying to track down the elusive Bigfoot, sometimes known as Sasquatch. He even got in touch with the FBI in the 1970s after he discovered something mysterious in the Washington mountains. 
There had been a Bigfoot sighting at a campground with a large tuft of hair left behind. Peter got in touch with FBI Assistant Director Jay Cochran Jr. in November of 1976 and sent the sample of hair to be tested. The FBI agreed to test the hair for Peter. Sadly, it turned out to be from a deer. And now, all these years later, Peter still hasn't been able to prove that a mountain monster exists, either in the mountains of Nepal or in the northwest of the United States. What about you? Do you think Bigfoot really exists? Let me know in the comments below. A box of treasure. Last summer, somebody stashed $10,000 in cash in the mountains of Utah. 17 days later, Andy Swagner from Draper found that buried chest while searching with his wife. It was filled, as promised, with $10,000 of cold, hard cash, a single silver coin, and a few other cool trinkets. He dug the buried treasure up at Hughes Canyon Trail near the mouth of the Big Cottonwood Canyon. Andy dug the treasure chest out from under a dead tree and told local news that he plans to use the cash to pay off some debts and then take his daughters to Disneyland. But let's back up a bit. Who in their right mind would bury so much money in a treasure chest just so people could go hunting for it? Well, it was hidden by John Maxim and David Klein as part of their second annual Utah treasure hunt. The hunt is supposed to be a thing that's happening every year now as a way to encourage people to go outside and get some fresh air. If you happen to be in Utah next summer, a trip into the mountains may just earn you a literal treasure. What would you do with a $10,000 mountain treasure? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon. Bye.